I created an IGTV where I asked women to click the link and give their full experiences or as much as they could remember um, of basically their feelings, how they felt after they'd received certain treatments, what their experiences were, and the responses were absolutely fascinating. Um, and a lot of these women call, uh, messaged me personally to tell me what their experiences were and how they had been treated and how they felt after receiving any kind of medical care. Um, and there is variation. There are variations, of course, because you know we have all sorts of different medical issues throughout our lives, and some are good and some are bad. But some of the responses I got were really, really interesting. Lots of women felt like they had had much better treatment within the A and E department or the NHS hospitals themselves, as opposed to their GPs. They felt very dismissed by their GPs, they felt very ignored by their GPs, and they generally felt like they actually would receive much far better treatment in the hospitals or the A&E department. So basically, when their illnesses had reached a certain point where they felt that it was absolutely necessary to call the A&E department, that's when they received the healthcare they deserved. Whenever I talk about women's health specifically on my platform, it gets the most response pretty much out of anything else. So if I talk about abortion, if I talk about fertility in any way, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, endome endometriosis, periods, this gets such a loud response because I think there's so much stigma that people tend to be desperate to give their experience when the opportunity arises. And this was one of those instances. The response was absolutely incredible to the point where the Department of Health and Social Care actually reached out and said that as a result of the video there they had had they had a they were having technical glitches because so many women were just so intent on telling them ex how they how they had been feeling and how how they'd been ignored throughout all of their years of being alive and being treated <laughs> I can, I'm gonna to have to read them out so that I don't misrepresent any of the things that I've heard. One person said that the NHS was amazing and, and saved their lives, but um, one person said that it was utter shite, got treated like shit when I thought I might have breast cancer. And I particularly, I do remember that, that I think that this particular person's story, they said that it was something to do with the way that they wore their bra. They saved my life twice, helped my child and fixed my face. So nothing but love for it. But my GP on the other hand is pure shit, sexist and awful. I'm so grateful that it's free, but man, is it fat phobic. Um, they saved my mum's life, helped my son come to the world, they are fab. Um, there are some people that have said, waiting forever, problems not benign, tr treated like a priority. Um, mixed, I'm so grateful, but GPs can be awful and waiting times are awful. Effing atrocious. Um, I had a lump on my vagina and it wasn't picked up on by my smear, but it should have been. Terrible, been waiting for therapy for near, near a year and nearly had to be ho hospitalised. Took 12 years to have a diagnosis for endometriosis and adenomyosis. Three year wait now for IVF. Been trying to get endometriosis and polycystic ovary syndrome diagnosed for seven years. I, I was told that I probably have endometriosis but wouldn't get any help unless I was trying for a baby. They don't follow up on anything and was the same with baby losses. They were no help at all. Um, and it's interesting actually, when I read these, I'm seeing there is such a commonality between in endometriosis, which as we know, doesn't get diagnosed for at least on average seven to eight years. So that, that is a very common one that I see a lot in, um, in women. With the admittedly fairly large influence I do have with my platform, I think it's important to talk about the things that I've experienced. I've, I've had genital warts, I've had anal tags, I've had, you know, I've had recurring thrush throughout my life. You know, I've had all sorts of different, you know, like sort of genitally based things. And I think that there, I think that people need to know, and I think we need to talk about them with an air of, you know, like, you know, the human body is so, 
interesting and bizarre. And of course it's gonna malfunction sometimes. So let's talk about that. Um, my diagnosis of polycystic ovary syndrome, I was told that I had it and then that was it. There was no explanation of what that meant for me and how I should move forward. And endometriosis, one in 10 women have endometriosis in the UK. Women have to literally be on their knees before they will get a diagnosis about it. And truly, honestly, it is a lot to do with the fact that the Me Too movement was so prevalent and so important. And we need to not just believe women, but believe patients believe female patients like and that is that is the problem we are not when we hear their pain we don't believe that it's really as bad as they say um so i've had an ongoing issue for about three years now i have a dull ache in my hip um and it started up around the time that i my grandfather died and i thought it might be stress related um, and then I told the NHS, they said it might be a physio problem, but I specifically said that the problem seemed to flare up when I was having a period. Um, but that was sort of like put to the side and I was sent into physio. So um, that didn't work. And then I was told that, well, actually I wasn't told. What happened was um, I had to get a scan. The scan happened about two years later because I kept going back and saying, there's something wrong please, please do something because this isn't normal. I'm 23. I don't think I should be experiencing this kind of pain. And so I got a scan, then I ne never heard anything about it. So I called them and this was, a, this was eight months later because I was still experiencing problems. And I just thought, what, could it, what, what can hurt? I'll give them a call and I'll see what they say. And they said, they randomly mentioned as they were explaining the results of the scan to me, um, they said, oh, you know, you know uh, and it was a mumble. It was like, oh, so I polycystic ovary. And I was like, what was that? And they were like, oh, polycystic, your, your polycystic ovaries. And I was like, no, I, no one's, no one's mentioned that to me. No one's ever said anything about that to me. And they're like, oh, well you should, this, you know, it says here that you knew. And I was like, no. So who, who wrote that note down to say that I was aware? And then when I went back for another scan, they said that I didn't have it. And it's just, it's, it's, still, it's still an ongoing issue. It's a complete mess. And the last time I went to anyone about it, I went to my GP and you know, this was actually a woman. And I said, you know, can you, can you ex like, can, can we do something? Cause I'm still in pain. This isn't, hasn't gone away. And she said, what would you like us to do? And I was like, okay. And she, and, and she said, is there anything else? And it was very clipped on the phone. And I was like, I just hung up because it was, the, it, it was the way she said it. It was like, well, what would you want? What do you want from us? What are we going to do? Um, and I've noticed that if my, if my symptoms or if my illness is generalized and is often, if it's a woman specific thing, it is largely ignored and I cannot get help for it. It's the same with um, thrush. And I know that men experience thrush as well, but my God, like I just feel, I feel so largely ignored and so frustrated that like so many of the experiences I've had and like a lot of women, I love the NHS and I think it's a real weird relationship that we have with the NHS. We want, because we feel for it, it's underfunded and it needs more support. We could be living anywhere where we would be not only like getting terrible treatment, but also paying for that treatment. So we're constantly kind of like shying away and saying, well, it could be worse, but actually it's still not that great. And in general, general treatment is fine, but treatment for women is sorely, sorely underfunded and it's being ignored because we are not being believed.